welcome back to the first of many cars this month from South Korea. Because for 20 points in summer of Series 30, you can go ahead and grab yourself the Hyundai Kona from 2022. Even I have to stop and think how to pronounce that one. This thing has from stock 276 brake horsepower and has 284 foot-pounds of torque, but it is very, very hefty, weighing in at 3,340 pounds with a 2-litre engine. Finally, something that isn't electric. Anyway, looking at the front, it's, well, uh, it's alright, I guess. I don't really know what to say about that. The side, pretty mediocre, and for the back, it's a Hyundai. It looks pretty much like the uh, Veloster N, but uh, going to the inside, it does look pretty cool. We've got more screens than you know what to do with, and especially cool is that little infographic dial tablet thingy just to our right. And now let's go ahead and take a listen to that 2-litre, so away we go. So going over to the upgrades, we're going to jump to conversions and see what's available. We go to engine swaps and we have a whopping one, which is the 1.6 litre inline four turbo rally. And to be honest, I think that's probably going to be quite a, I guess, common theme to have throughout this month. But we've also got a rear wheel drive drivetrain and all wheel drive as well, which we'll come back to in a little bit. As for aero, looks like we've got, we've just got Forza front aero and well, for the back, I'm considering, nope. It, oh wait, no, it is actually a different Forza wing. Okay, it's not the one I thought it was going to be. And it fits over the normal wing on this, so we have a wing for the wing. And apparently the race exhaust makes a pretty big difference to the way this thing sounds. So here's the stock engine. And here is with the race exhaust. Let's go ahead and take a listen. I mean, yeah, there is quite a difference between the two. Go ahead and let me know which one you prefer in the comments. Also, this thing's apparently turbocharged. And like ever, our favourite local tuner, Big Macintosh 762, has made yet another tune for us. So let me go ahead and load up the share code. There we go. Feel free to go ahead and download that and try it out for yourself, because that's what we're going to do right now. So with that tune, we're going up to £2,636 with 350 brake horsepower. Not bad. Also, while this tune is saving, if you want to go ahead and see more content, feel free to go ahead and press subscribe and, of course, like. We're trying to get to 1K by the end of this year, and so far we're doing pretty well. Here we are now at the paint shop. We've got nothing in advance like normal, which is kind of becoming just a sort of trend now. But also, the semi-slick uh, Hot Wheels race tyres look really, really good with the stock paint job on this thing. Anyway, going to stock paint jobs, let's go ahead and see how many colours we've got. We've got ourselves one, two, three, four different colours for this thing. And I think that's kind of a popular choice when it comes to everything. But we also do have tomato ketchup red as well. You know, I'm heavily considering making that a pin badge. So, a little cool but not so cool fact about this thing is it can set you back anywhere from 35.6 thousand to 36.4 thousand to buy one of these from you. However, you can go ahead and get one of these for 27,231 pounds at the lowest price on internet car sites. That means stuff like Auto Trader, CarWow, and potentially eBay. Although that's also a risky option doing that. And away we go, we're up against a whole heap of other various vehicles, I think we're still front wheel drive, and we're down into 10th off the start line. That's not a good start. Now, a pretty cool thing is, I think we have anti-lag on this thing, in fact we'll go ahead and find out in a little bit. Also, is that an old Cooper? I think it is. Well, I say old, Cooper's not exactly old, but you know what I'm talking about here, right? And we'll just make up a couple extra positions, excuse me. There is a massive BMW in front of us, but now it is hopefully going to stay behind us. That means move. Going through the twistier section, we are currently now into fourth. Never mind, make that third. Let's go ahead and see. Can we catch second and first before the end of this race? I kind of hope we can, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. Although there is, uh, there goes second rather. And first is just up here, so there is potential for us to get them. I think of maybe around here. Come on, don't clout the dodge and still make it through. Well, that was close. Now, as cool as this little thing is, I don't actually believe the Hyundai Kona N is actually made anymore. I believe the Hyundai Kona exists, but I'm not so sure if the Kona N as a higher spec thing is still made. But, uh, oh well, let's go ahead and keep going, shall we? 95% it is going tonight, and we're in a dark coloured car, which is always fun because you can't see anything. But across the line we go, a very, very good amount of space between us and literally everybody else. So, a first place naturally, and a 2 minute 10 time. God, imagine saying that 10 times quickly. So here we are now back over at the upgrade shop. We're going to jump over, make this thing all-wheel drive, and go to the engine swaps, because I think you know what's coming next. We're throwing in the 1.6-litre turbo rally engine, and we're going to try and make this massive behemoth here into a little bit of a drag build. Now, I don't know, you know, how well it's going to go. I don't have much faith in this thing, but you never know, it could end up surprising us all. So here we are now at £2,750 with 668 brake horsepower, and let's go and find out if it's actually any good. 
And like usual, now I have to sit here and tune six gears, which is a lot better than this thing's eight speed stock transmission. Yeah, you heard me right. Something with 276 brake horsepower has eight gears from stock. Oh boy. And of course, while we save the paint, here's a little story about the N of the Kona N or the anything else that ends with N from Hyundai. Apparently, it claims to refer to two elements, the Namyang district in South Korea. I hope I got that right. And also the Nürburgring, where a lot of the N brand cars are tested. OK, here we are now over at the back of the Horizon area. Let's go ahead and see. Do we get a wheelie check? No, nope, we get a stall for start. But oh, what? Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. No, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it, oh, we're going to be here a while. Wait a second, while we're here, I'll get back to this in a second. Is that the Macaron? I do believe it is. Well, Super 7 card, I don't know if this is the fastest drag card, but let's go ahead and find out. Away we go with 660 yard brake horsepower, nearly 670. This thing weighs about as much as a local barge, and also could be nicknamed a Stormtrooper just by how the back of it looks in this colour. We're going through the camera, we've got 171, and off the end of the drag strip, we've got ourselves 189. Mm hmm, that's not shaping up too well, is it? And now back we go to throw some more stuff at it. You could phrase that in any way you think. But we are, of course, going to go ahead and start out with some semi-slick tyres. And we're going to go ahead and change the suspension as well. So back to platform and handling. And put that back to race. Because the last thing we need is this thing to start bouncing up and down like a bouncy ball in the Atlantic Ocean. Anyway, let's go ahead, apply all those upgrades, and go out to the motorway. But before we do that, here is this week's Forzathon shop. We have got the Ferrari F50, the red suit, the gone car horn, which sounds a bit like this. To be honest, I don't know what else I was expecting. We've got the Horizon Super Wheel Spinner and the GTV Fior Fiorano? Fior Fionari? I don't know. We've got the <laughs> Italian thing over here that will catch fire if you try and drift it. And also the Horizon Wheel Spin. Nearly forgot that one. Okay, here we are now with the multicolored Stormtrooper at the edge of the motorway. Let's go on launch control and away we go. Let's go ahead and see how we do. I'm hoping for a pretty decent top speed because the drag racing kind of let it down a little bit and the uh, regular race was very, very tricky. We did end up winning, but this thing was quite a pain to control because it is a front wheel drive massive SUV. Anyway, let's go ahead and see what we get through the speed zone. So let's get going. And while we're here, let me know in the comments, would you buy one of these? And out of the speed zone at 211.24, and we are still going, we're at 215 to the bottom right, and I've got a feeling we're going to stay there for quite a while, but let's go ahead to the downhill and go and see what we get. And through the camera we go at 216.5, going downhill 217, 218, 219, 220, it's going out quicker than I can count, we've got 221, 222, and I think that might just be the top speed of this thing, 222 miles an hour, which for an SUV... I will say, okay, that is, you know, pretty impressive for this thing. So maybe it does have some redeeming factors, but uh, let's see how well it does for the next bit. The bit that involves a lot of sideways. Or slideways, depends how you want to call it, really. Either way, we're going drifting, so let's go and throw it in to the Lunar New Year themed drift zone. Let's go ahead and get a lot of sideways, and also apparently a bit of a wall. And let's try and keep it going out the edge of here, and we get 25,906. Which is a decent amount in points, but that's not even two stars on that drift zone. Well, it's two stars, but it's not three. Okay, I've now cranked up the rear tyre pressure to the moon and back. Let's go ahead and see if we get anything better going back the other way. We need 25,000 to beat, and hopefully that might have just done the trick up in the tyre pressure because we go out the other side at 35,598 points, which is a lot better than what we went in with. I mean, to be fair, we also didn't clear the bridge, so I guess that helps too. So that is the Hyundai Kona N. It's kind of a bit mediocre, I'm not going to lie. It's not great, it's not awful, it's just somewhere in the middle. I do like the idle from the stock engine, but that's probably about all I like about this thing, really. I'm not going to lie, there's not much going for it in terms of it actually being decent. It looks like a Veloster N, but just massive. Like somebody, I don't know, I guess like somebody put it in an oven at like 50 degrees for, I don't know how long. But either way, what I'm trying to say is, it's kind of an okay car. It's worth getting if you want to add it to your collection, or if you're a massive Hyundai fan. Because then you can get a massive Hyundai car as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to say it might be worth it, might not be worth it. Make of it what you will. But I'll go ahead and see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Sag out. See you. I landed that outro perfectly. I'm so happy.